joining Jennifer Schaas and Associates in our 2019 Webinar Wednesday series. We're coming to you live from downtown Washington, D.C. Our webinars are every Wednesday. You can find the upcoming schedule on our website. Past webinars and all recordings are also on our website and on our YouTube channel, along with over 160 other recordings on federal contracting topics. All are complimentary. If you have questions for our speaker today, you can email him directly via the contact information you'll see on the last slide. All right, that's just a little bit about us. We are a Washington, D.C.-based firm and provide services for federal contractors. This ranges from market analysis reports to proposal writing and also close to work compliance. More information is on our website, so please visit us there. We do offer, oh, sorry, I was going to say we do offer advertising in our newsletter, so just send us an email if you'd like more information on that. And our speaker today is Alan Scheibs, and he's going to be going over doing business with DLA. Um, Alan, thank you for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Okay, great. Thanks, Mallory. Uh, and you can hear me okay, correct? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for coming out today. So I'm uh, doing business with DLA or Defense Logistics Agency, and uh, I'll try to make sure that I uh, do not uh, get uh, down in the weeds on alphabet soup and all of the acronyms uh, there. Uh, so DLA or Defense Logistics Agency uh, is a, an, an animal on, upon its own. Uh, if you have done business through the federal government uh, using the FBO or now the new beta SAM, uh, it's similar but completely different at the same same time. So, um, however, I will say, and and having the experience, and I'll bring up one program that I ran for the state of Oklahoma, a manufacturing program where back in the um, early 2000s, we worked with a number of oil and gas manufacturers to help them understand how to develop and manufacture uh, parts for the aviation industry, mainly serving uh, the uh, Air Force and the depots uh, there in and around uh, Tinker Air Force Base, located in uh, right outside of Oklahoma City, uh, there that uh, they found that doing business with DLA uh, through the uh, what we'll uh, talk in a minute about uh, on the DIB side or the DLA Internet Bid Board system can actually generate a, a really good uh, uh, stream of revenue uh, for you. Um, it's very easy once you are in and understand how to ride that DLA bicycle, if I can use that analogy. Next slide there. So I've got a couple of bullet points, and what I thought I'd do is just sort of lay out a high-level process uh, here and share some stories uh, there. I'm, I will offer that, um, you know, absolutely do take down my uh, contact information because this is – Doing business with uh, DLA through the DIB site, uh, it, you know, if you have not done it before, uh, it can be frustrating uh, there um, without somebody to kind of walk you through, um, at least for the first time, uh, and help you navigate the DIB site uh, there. So like any government site, they're going to throw everything they can possibly throw on a single website. Uh, so, um, and it's, that's the case with DIBs. Uh, it's all there. Lots of links, lots of uh, uh, sources uh, in that uh, our website, um, and I'm certainly open to helping you navigate uh, that, uh, certainly offer that uh, to you there. So a little bit about uh, Defense Logistics Agency. So uh, DOA was established to really be, be the procurement arm for uh, the different branches uh, of service in the Department of Defense, uh, Navy, Air Force, Army, uh, Marines, primarily providing those commodity type items as well as parts for aircraft, parts for uh, Jeeps, tanks, uh, you know, any number of uh, weapon systems uh, at, that are out there. They also buy alcohol uh, uh, through DIBs, so, so that's an actual uh, item that is procured alcohol and non-alcohol, uh, and they have their own um, uh, classification codes uh, there uh, that, that help. Uh, you're probably familiar with NAICS codes uh, on the beta SAM side uh, there or the FBO side uh, where DLA is going to use what's called a uh, a federal supply class uh, there. We'll talk about that. Uh, so um, historically, DLA used to buy and warehouse items. Uh, this was back in the uh, late 90s uh, there. Uh, they got out of the warehousing business and they put in 
the system, uh, the old bid boards where you had to go out to a, a physical location, see the bids that were literally pasted on the wall for different parts or different commodity buys uh, there, whether it's aviation, whether it's energy uh, or logistics uh, there. And you would bid on those items. Now, when they moved it all into the dibs items, they did a couple of things. So this allowed them to um, quit warehousing. So it was really kind of procure on demand. So as a company would provide six uh, types of some widget, uh, some commodity, some item uh, out there, they might provide six tomorrow. Um, there might be another procurement for 15 two weeks from now. There could be another procurement for 100 three months from now. Uh, so understanding how uh, DLA does their forecasting, um, really digging into the forecasting area, because again, they're not warehousing this. So as uh, there's a number of systems out there, I'll, I'll call them legacy systems. Uh, if I if I recall right off the top of my head, there's probably about nine now. Uh, they've I'm sure they've um, migrated some of these into a single system, but from the field using component out there in the end, all the way the end user all the way back to the depot systems, all the way back to DLA, a lot of this information and request for parts and uh, act, uh, for procurement uh, there flows through these different systems and through the different uh, offices out there in the fields from say like an Air Force from a Ford operating base all the way uh, back to the depot and then back to DLA where then DLA would procure the item. Now DLA also too has Although they have headquarters uh, there in uh, uh, different areas, uh, Richmond uh, being one of the areas, Philadelphia being uh, another uh, there. So um, they've also put buying arms out at the different uh, uh, facilities there in the Army, Air Force, uh, Navy uh, areas there. So they've got uh, components of DLA personnel out on the base working directly with the engineer and the different weapon systems. Uh, and uh, program management offices uh, there at the uh, depot systems where they do the overhaul on these uh, major systems, aircraft, uh, ships, uh, all that good stuff uh, there. So so DLA is a, a very uh, uh, sophisticated network uh, there, uh, but I will say it runs quite smooth. And, you know, lo a lot of their procurements, uh, let's see, uh, the slide says about 80, 80 to 85 percent of the, those all flow through the DLA internet bid board system. So you have an acronym inside an acronym, right? So Defense Logistics Agency internet bid board system. And that bid board system is, is set up uh, quite, um, it's, it's organized from a standpoint of uh, parts under 100,000, parts over 100,000, those under 100 RFQs, those over or RFPs. Now they still have their same set of sides uh, um, that they do through, these, through the bid set through the DIBS system uh, there. So whether it's total small business or whether it's woman owned, uh, so you can still do those types of set asides there, but it's the same basic premise as if you were working through a full and open uh, uh, competition out on FBO or beta, right? You still have to go into DIBS, you have to um, search the item, you have to review the drawings, you have to bid on that item. Uh, there. So the first step that, that I've identified here is one, just establishing an account. Now the accounts are, are very straightforward, very easy um, to establish. If you've got a cage code, they essentially add a user number onto the end of your cage code and you get a login authority. And of course you'll have an administrator and then you can add users there. So you might have your cage code in a 01, 02, 03, so you can have multiple users. And then they have a whole separate system uh, that's, uh, that's in or derived out of the DIBS uh, system called C folders. And C folders is where they house all of the specifications and drawings that the government owns uh, there. Um, and I'll talk about that uh, briefly uh, in just a second. They, ha they have all of the drawings in a system that you have to go and log into. Now, I will tell you that both of these systems uh, can be quite temperamental from a password standpoint. They're very strict on the passwords. Um, however, 
their help desk are, are very helpful uh, there. They're probably one of the better ones you'll come across in the government uh, there. But the passwords are, uh, they can be challenging sometimes. Uh, you, you know, I think they're all 16 characters and you gotta have a, a whole combination of every key on your, uh, on your uh, computer. Uh, there. But the C folders is going to allow you to get in and see, okay, if I'm procuring an aircraft part or a tank part, um, that part has to be procured or manufactured to a specific uh, or to a specification that was um, uh, either that was procured already, obviously, uh, on a weapon system there uh, by the government directly from the original equipment manufacturer or OEM. Now they have those folders, those opportunities coming through dibs, they classify those on what's called an AMSC code. Now I do not have that listed uh, and this kind of starts getting into the weeds so I'll just touch on it real quick. They have a code called G-coded items. G-coded items, G is in golf, uh, it's an AMSC code G, means that the government owns the technical data. Uh, so you as a better, you do not have to go and forge a relationship with a Lockheed, with a Northrop Grumman, with a Boeing uh, in order to, to um, uh, do that uh, there. So you can access those drawings, those specifications uh, through your C folders uh, there. And a lot of times you'll find that the drawings are loaded up in a very antiquated uh, uh, way using scanned mylars uh, there. So uh, basically they've got a big, imagine a big aircraft part drawing uh, that was done back in the 50s. And yeah, I'm being completely real here. Done back in the 50s for some part, they have scanned that item in and their one drawing may be, uh, may could make up 10 separate files. So you would actually have to download those 10 separate files from C folders uh, to really reconstruct that drawing. However, the data is there and the government owns it uh, there. So, so you do have to be uh, proficient or um, understand how to uh, view a drawing in order to uh, determine what type of part, because it could be that the drawing they have doesn't necessarily say for a shim or for a uh, hinge, uh, rather that hinge that they're actually procuring or that shim or that part is buried in a drawing that has hundreds of other parts also called out. So you, you have to be proficient uh, in some cases as far as digging down into the drawings there. Now they've done a really good job in my opinion of classifying uh, these in what's called an FSC and I say these being the different uh, parts and systems. So if you're someone that provides uh, T-shirts and boots, and that's what you provide. They're obviously buying that information, uh, so it's very easy to find uh, the list of federal supply classes uh, on the DIBs, and you can go in and identify those federal supply classes and then use those federal supply classes to actually search for the bid items directly on DIBs. However, I would, uh, taking a step uh, back there and looking at step four, um, in setting up your search, one of the things that uh, we always uh, strategized and recommended through strategy, um, especially in the aircraft side, is if you're a manufacturer out there, obviously it takes uh, resources to build up a line, right? So you have to have certain components in place to do uh, different manufacturings of different parts, whether it be aircraft parts, again, uh, you know, or a t-shirt, right? So you may have to have different lettering or different, some, you know, whatever the case may be uh, there. So what you would want to know is, does DLA buy this item on a routine basis? So if you are going to make the investment in your manufacturing line to set up to be able to produce a part, you would want to be reassured uh, by viewing the forecast, and they do a really good job of forecasting uh, on dibs, as well as not only seeing the upcoming forecast, but you can see the historical buys. So you can really kind of see, are they buying this item on a routine basis uh, there? So, and you know, routine to you may be 100 times a year, or it may be 
um, 10 times a year or it could be a thousand times a year. So whatever that number is that uh, provides the, the confidence in, for you to make the investment in your line or your manufacturing plant or um, the parts that, or the systems you may need to produce that part on a routine basis that if you're, you know, if that overall cost is $10,000, obviously to do that, then you want to make sure that, uh, you know, there's, there's ample opportunity coming down the line where you can one recoup that investment, uh, for you to, uh, uh, make when you respond. Now, when you identify, uh, the forecast and FSCs, then you can go in and, and set up your searches uh, in the dip systems. And there's alternative systems. Uh, out there, uh, Bitsby, we run one of those systems. We run, uh, we've got elements uh, of divs uh, in there. There's a number of other systems um, uh, that are out there, data aggregation systems that really kind of help with forecasting and parts management uh, to help companies in doing this. Divs does it. Uh, again, you can do it directly off the div site. It's all public data uh, out there. And, and finding divs is really easy. Just go Google divs and you'll be right there. Now, I will say, It'll look like uh, you're going into a site uh, that you do not want. Your most computers are going to tell you, "Do are you sure you want to enter this site?" I will tell you that this is one of those. It's okay to say yes. Please go ahead and, and uh, let allow me to enter uh, the site uh, there. So, um, and then like uh, FBO or like the Beta Sam, you want to set up your daily review of the items. Now, uh, the daily review comes in because they're it's it's pretty set in stone that the typical uh, turnaround times for dibs is seven to 14 days. Now, a lot of these bids are automated. Now, I will define a lot of those bids as probably 80% uh, of all of those bids going in are automated. That means that when they input an item, they are setting uh, some criteria in on that item that it actually only needs three bids in order to close. And so the system itself that you submit the bid on will know that uh, will be preset to receive three bids. And then once it receives three bids uh, for that item, it will close the bid. And then based on the price, it will actually award the bid as well. So the system, it's a, when I say automated, it is automated. So they'll actually do the awards uh, uh, from that as well. Now here's the good news. Once you bid one, uh, national stock number, and that's a completely different uh, briefing there on the breakdown of national stock numbers, which also includes the federal supply class. But once you bid on one national stock number, you've already got your pricing, you've already got your um, uh, manufacturers that you would you may use for the different components of it. I would highly, highly advise you stomping my feet on the ground to keep that information uh, in a database so that when that com item comes up for bid again, you're not having to go back out and do all of that due diligence again. You're able to look at the price, update your price, submit your bid. Uh, that's how a lot of manufacturers and the program uh, that uh, we ran for the aviation community uh, out of the state of Oklahoma, they were able to build a backlog of, of revenue in some cases uh, upwards of fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month of backlog of revenue uh, that were continuous of items continuously being bought uh, through dips uh, there. So it does really kind of become um, at that point uh, almost like a um, a stock exchange, right? You're monitoring the price uh, that it was bid at last, and you're making sure that uh, your price is going to be competitive going back in there. So once you have all of that in, input and set up, you're going to, uh, as a step eight, you're just going to repeat six and seven. And then, of course, on an annual basis, you'll want to go back and maybe reassess or, you know, if you're wanting to expand and grow into some different parts uh, and, and start to manufacture other parts or invest in other manufacturing lines or partners that do the manufacturing, you would go back uh, through that process as well. So. Um, I tell you, I this in the, in the amount of time, and I'm, I'm grateful for um, uh, Jennifer and Mallory setting this up uh, there. I've really skipped the rock uh, on the ocean of doing business uh, with DLA, but this would be the overarching process that you would utilize. Um, again, I'm I'm very happy to uh, to to take you through the dib site, uh, share some stories, some. Uh, both the good sides and the bad sides of, of companies that have been successful in doing this and the things that you have to do in order to be successful uh, in the 
uh, Defense Statistics Agency procurement uh, system there. So that's uh, that's all I have on this uh, uh, today at, at this level. So Mallory, uh, thank you again. I'm going to turn it back over to you. And again, I encourage anyone to uh, call me direct or email me. Happy to uh, visit with you and understand where you want to go on it. So Mallory. Yeah, thank you, Alan, uh, for joining us today. And like you mentioned, if you have any questions, please feel free to email him or call him at the phone number shown on your screen. And this concludes this webinar. Thank you.